Before a valve can undergo any type of maintenance, several things must happen. For example, maintenance preparations have to be made and the valve must be removed from service. If appropriate, the valve may also be removed from its system and taken to a shop for repairs. Then the valve is disassembled and its parts are inspected. In this part, we'll look at a typical disassembly procedure for one common type of valve, called a globe valve, and we'll see how to perform a valve inspection. To disassemble this globe valve, the mechanic in our example first loosens the bonnet nuts and the gland nuts on both sides. Next, the mechanic unscrews the gland nuts completely and removes them. This relieves pressure on the packing. Now he removes the bonnet nuts and the bonnet assembly and removes the sealing gasket. To remove the hand wheel, he rotates it in the closed direction as far as possible and then removes the hand wheel nut and the hand wheel from the valve. Now he can rotate the valve stem until it's out of the bonnet. The mechanic extracts the gland nuts and bolts and now that the stem is removed, takes the gland follower completely off. Finally, he pushes out the old packing. Once a valve is disassembled, its exposed parts can be inspected thoroughly. The mechanic in our example begins the inspection at the flanges. First, he cleans the flanges on the valve with the wire brush. He uses a gasket scraper for hard to remove material, being careful not to gouge the flange sealing surface. Then he checks the flanges for nicks and corrosion. Flanges that are in good condition will have a smooth surface. The stem bushing should be inspected for wear and damage as well. If the bushing threads were allowed to wear out on a rising stem valve, the valve would no longer open or close. Therefore, worn bushing should be replaced. The mechanic inspects the valve stem next for wear and damage. He starts by cleaning the stem with a fine emery or crocus cloth to remove dirt, chemical buildup, and burrs. Even properly adjusted packing can leak if the valve stem is bent or worn. A bent or worn stem can prevent the packing from sealing properly and make the valve hard to open or close. With the stem on V-blocks, the mechanic checks its straightness by using a dial indicator to perform a run-out test. He puts the dial indicator in contact with the stem, zeroes the dial indicator, and then rotates the stem. The stem is straight if the pointer on the dial remains constant on zero during the entire rotation. Deviation on the dial indicates that the stem is bent and that it may need to be replaced. Check with the supervisor for the amount of acceptable deviation at your facility before you replace a bent stem. A damaged or corroded stem may also need to be replaced. The mechanic can remove moderate amounts of corrosion from the valve bonnet or body with a wire brush. Finally, he inspects the disc. The mechanic checks the disc to stem connection for proper movement by turning it manually. Then he inspects the disc for wear, damage, and corrosion. Minor wear or corrosion can be repaired by resurfacing or lapping the disc. In the event of cracks or excessive wear or damage, however, the disc should be replaced. Once maintenance preparations have been made and the valve has been disassembled and inspected, maintenance can begin. In this part, we'll look at some typical valve maintenance procedures, including lapping and spotting in. In our example, the mechanic has already disassembled the valve and removed the packing. The seating surface of this valve bonnet has a minor steam cut, which the mechanic can repair through lapping. Lapping is a resurfacing process that is accomplished by rubbing a valve part against another surface coated with a lapping compound. This smooths the valve part surface. Flat valve surfaces, such as the surface of this bonnet, are generally rubbed against a metal lapping block coated with a lapping compound. To lap mating valve surfaces, such as the surfaces of this disc and seat, the disc is coated with a lapping compound and then the disc and seat are rubbed against each other. Now let's see how the mechanic laps the surface of this damaged valve bonnet. To begin, 
he applies a small amount of lapping compound to a lapping block. To achieve a smooth surface, he starts with the coarse grade compound and gradually changes to finer grades as the surface is smoothed. The mechanic moves the bonnet through the lapping compound in a figure eight motion, being careful not to exert excessive or uneven pressure on the bonnet. The weight of the bonnet should provide adequate pressure to smooth the surface. The mechanic frequently checks the bonnet's seating surface by wiping away the excess compound and inspecting the bonnet. He repeats the lapping process until the seating surface is smooth. After lapping the bonnet, the mechanic checks the disc and seat for proper seating. An improperly seated valve will leak. One method for checking the disc and seat for proper seating is called spotting in or bluing. The disc normally rotates freely on the stem. This gives the disc a self-seating feature and provides a good seal when the valve is closed. However, during spotting in, the disc must not be allowed to rotate. To prevent rotation, the mechanic positions shims between the stem and the disc. This holds the stem in place and keeps the disc from rotating on it. Once the movement of the disc on the stem has been blocked, the mechanic applies an even thin coating of a bluing substance to the surface of the disc. Next, he carefully places the disc on the valve seat and rotates it one quarter turn with a slight downward pressure. When the mechanic removes the disc from the valve and inspects the disc and the seat, he should see a thin, even, unbroken blue line on the seating areas if proper seating occurred. When he's finished inspecting the valve disc and seat, the mechanic wipes them clean of the bluing. Imperfections detected in the disc or seat during spotting in will require repairs or replacement. Many valves are equipped with replaceable parts, which make it more economical to replace discs and seats with severe imperfections than to repair them. Check with the supervisor on the policy at your facility. If minor disc or seat imperfections are found, they are often repaired by lapping. With shims in place to keep the disc from rotating on the stem, the mechanic applies a small amount of lapping compound to the disc. He then places the disc on the seat and moves it back and forth with a slight downward pressure. Occasionally, he moves the disc forward one quarter turn to ensure even lapping. The mechanic frequently checks the disc seating surface by wiping away the excess compound and inspecting the disc and seat. He repeats the lapping process until the seating surfaces are smooth. When the lapping is complete, the disc and seat should be spotted in again to make sure that they're seating properly. Once all the necessary maintenance has been performed on a valve, the valve must be reassembled so that it can be returned to service. In this part, we'll see how a mechanic reassembles a flanged globe valve. The mechanic in our example begins the reassembly procedure by removing shims that were placed around the stem during a spotting in procedure. Next, he lubricates all moving and threaded valve parts. Be sure to check the manufacturer's instructions to determine which lubricant is right for the valve that you are servicing. After all the moving and threaded parts of the valve have been lubricated, the mechanic puts the stem partially through the bonnet. Then he slides the gland follower over the stem and replaces the gland nuts. Next, he threads the stem through the stem bushing and replaces the hand wheel nuts and bolts and the hand wheel. Now the mechanic can replace the gasket between the body and bonnet. He takes the new gasket and sets it on the body seating surface. At this point, the mechanic turns the hand wheel until the valve is in the fully open position. When a valve is being reassembled, it is vital that the valve be kept in the fully open position. This keeps the disc from being driven into the seat during reassembly, which could bend the stem or damage the seating surfaces and prevent the valve from opening. Now the mechanic places the stem, bonnet, and packing gland assembly on the valve body and replaces the bonnet bolts and tightens them evenly to compress the new gasket. The bonnet must rest squarely on the body of the valve as each bolt is torqued to its proper value.
as indicated in the manufacturer's instruction manual. Using a cross torque pattern, the mechanic tightens one bolt, then he tightens the bolt opposite it. Next he tightens a bolt next to the first bolt and then tightens its opposite bolt. He continues the pattern until each bolt has been torqued to its proper value. After the bonnet is installed, the mechanic repacks the valve. Now the valve is fully reassembled and ready to be reinstalled. Reinstalling this flanged globe valve involves two basic steps, inserting new gaskets and replacing the flange bolts. This valve is large, so rigging holds it in place while the mechanic wire brushes, lubricates, and replaces the two bottom flange bolts on either side of the valve. The mechanic then adds two additional flange bolts on each side of the valve. These bolts will hold the new gaskets securely in the correct positions. With the support flange bolts in place, the mechanic slips the gaskets in between the valve flange and the pipe flange. Then he tightens each flange bolt until the valve is securely in place. He completes the reinstallation by cleaning the work area and returning all tools to their proper storage places. Locks and tags can now be safely removed and the valve can be returned to service.